Okay, if we'd like to turn to Ezekiel chapter 9. Ezekiel chapter 9. I'm going to start reading at verse 1. Then he called out in my hearing with a loud voice, saying, Let those who have charge over the city draw near, each with a deadly weapon in his hand. And suddenly six men came from the direction of the upper gate, which faces north, each with his battle axe in his hand. One man among them was clothed with linen and had a writer's ink on at his side. They went in and stood be- beside the bronze altar. Now the glory of the, the God of Israel had gone up from the cherub where it had been to the threshold of the temple. And he called to the man clothed with linen who had the writer's ink on at his side. And the Lord said to him, Go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, and put a mark on the foreheads of the men who sigh and cry over all the abominations that are done within it. To the others he said in my hearing, Go half, go after him through the city and kill. Do not let you your eyes spare nor have any pity. After he slay old and young men, maidens and little children, and women, but do not come near anyone on whom is the mark, and begin at my sanctuary. So they began with the elders who were before the temple. Then he said to them, Defile the temple and fill the courts with the slain. Go out, and they went out and killed in the city. So it was while they were killing them, I was left alone. And I fell on my face and cried out and said, Ah, oh, Lord God, will you destroy all the remnant of Israel in pouring out your fury on Jerusalem? Then he said to me, The iniquity of the house of Israel and Judah is exceedingly great, and the land is full of bloodshed, and the city full of perversity. For they say the Lord has forsaken the land, and the Lord does not see. And as for me also, my eye will neither spare, nor will I have pity, but I will recompense their deeds on their own head. Just then the man clothed with linen, who had the ink on had his side, reported back and said, I have done as you have commanded. Let's ask the Lord to bless our meeting. Father God, as always, it is a privilege to study your word, but also, Lord, it's a great responsibility to be standing here, Lord, to be preaching your word. And Lord, I ask that the Holy Spirit, Lord, will come, will help me today to speak this word through me, Lord. Because in myself, Lord, as the Apostle Paul said, I didn't come with wise and persuasive words, but with a demonstration of the Spirit and of power, so that your faith won't rest in, my, in his words, but in rests in the power of God. Lord, bless each of our hearts here today. May our hearts be receptive to what you want to say, Lord. And please help me to deliver this message, Lord. I ask this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Okay, so last time I spoke, we were in the book of Ezekiel. Um, <clears throat> there, we saw that Ezekiel had been appointed a watchman for the house of Israel. Uh, someone who would sound the alarm against any impending danger. If the watchman didn't sound the warning, God would personally hold him responsible for not sounding the alarm. God had specifically told him, give them warning from me. <coughs> if you warn him and he does not turn from his iniquity and sin, his blood will not be on your hand. He will die in his iniquity. But if you don't warn him and he dies in his sin, his blood that will require at your hand. Then we ask the sobering question. Where are the watchmen today? We ask that sobering question. And it needs to be asked again. Where are the watchmen? Where are the shepherds? No one is sounding the alarm. The church is experiencing every wind of doctrine. If you can call it doctrine. Where are the watchmen? Charismatics are emphasizing that revival is coming. A new wave of God's Spirit. 
a new anointing. And God is going to pour out his spirit and he's going to do signs and wonders and everything else. Friends, we should be we 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 we, we should be we should be like Ezekiel but then when he wept. When he wept of these things. But it's the norm in the in, in so-called assembly tree. It's the normal thing. They are not interested in men's souls. The only prophets they know is the ones they make. Yeah. That's true. They're not interested in man's souls. One man, uh, one man got up and he preached and he said, if that widow who is on benefits and on her, uh, uh, offers you a lost five pound, you take it. You are the anointed man of God. You take that five pound offer. And then he brags that he's building a bigger house that King Solomon would be proud of. They know, they will know there's a God in heaven when they pass my house, when they pass my mansion, and they see my Rolls Royce inside my driveway. Yeah, Is that the gospel? Does that resemble the word of God? Does that resemble the word of God? Where are the watchmen? Why have the church slumped so low? Men who claim that they know Jesus. But I heard just yesterday of one blatant heretic who said Jesus became the embodiment of sin. And when he was on the cross, listen to this, he became a paedophile. Are you shocked? Wait. He became a lost person. He became a Satan worshipper. Because he took on to the sin. Do you know the Bible proves that God is long suffering? Do you know why I know that? Because these men would have been dead years ago. They would have been struck down. And it makes me so annoyed. When man can get up and preach utter blasphemy and lead people astray. This nation, as I said before, is under the judgment of God. Those who've turned their back on God, those inside the church and outside the church, there's going to be consequences. When individuals preach lies in the name of the Lord, there'll be consequences. You know, we cannot judge those outside the church. That's up to God. But when those in the church claim to know Jesus Christ, we've got to address them. For far too long, the church of God, it's all right. You can't bury our heads in the sand no longer. We can't, we can't brush into the carpet. These people pose a threat. It's time for judgment to begin at the house of God. And if we are scarcely saved, what about them? What's going to happen to them? Those preaching false lies, those leading man astray. The wrath of God is being revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth. What do you mean men who suppress the truth? Well, them, they, are, them, they haven't got the truth. They're talking about people in the church. They're supposed to know the truth. And they, well, they do know the truth because God has revealed it to them. But more importantly, to them who should know the truth, who are behind the pulpits this morning, who will be behind the pulpits later on today, sometime, to preach God's word. You know, when a nation passes a law on having a fetus aborted, Mm. at any time in pregnancy, I tell you something, you can see how far this nation has fallen. Let me tell you something. That's murder. Mm. Murder! And on the day of judgment, God will say, Where's the baby? 
No baby. Get out the box. Yes, there was a baby. That's murder. You know, they used to say diamonds are the girl's best friend, right? No, the divorce courts are the girl's best friend, no? One woman bragged, I'm so glad for the divorce courts. I am. S she was ecstatic. Because if, you know, the, the, the marriage, you know, bad that marriage didn't work, divorce court. We have a nerve to try and convince me and you that we are living in a Christian country. Mm. And we are, you know, most of the country, most of the country uh, is, 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 is living, trying to live some kind of a religious life. Really? A woman wrote to a pastor and said, can you help me? She said, my husband's got a gambling addiction. It's gone out of control. She said, I just can't cope. I don't know what to do. So he said, look, tell him to go and see the local pastor and have a chat to him. Pray for him. So he goes down to the pastor. And he tells the pastor, I've got a gambling addiction. And the pastor, guess what the pastor says to him? He said, sir, I can't find anything wrong in, with gambling. There's nothing in the Bible that indicates there's, there's anything wrong with gambling. You go ahead and enjoy yourself. That's what he said. This is a man of God. Or supposedly man of God. It just makes me so annoyed. You know, the love of many believers have waxed cold. They have moved so far from the foundation that they don't even know what truth and error is anymore. They cannot discern between truth and error. The word of God is not sufficient enough. No, 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 no. We've got to have more. That's why the Toronto blessing came out. Man craved extra manifestations. He craved them. And out of that came the Toronto blessing. Do you know we got more prophets around today than, more, than any other time in history? Mm -hmm. Was you aware of that? Yes. And for a fee, you can enroll in a prophetic school. Yeah, of ministry. And you, you can learn from a prophet how to become a prophet. The prophets God used were godly men whom God used in times past. But we must emphasize once and for all, the prophetic office is now closed. Yeah. Closed. Yeah. The pathetic office is open. <laughs> if anybody wants to apply but the prophetic office is closed in other words God doesn't use modern day prophets he doesn't need to today we have the full canon of scripture right here right at our fingertips and what a privilege because some people never used, could open a bible the persecuted church tear, tear a page each out of, the, out of the Bible and hide them. And when they've read them, they read, the, they read, they read them. They read the words not to get caught. We have the canon of scripture. We have the full canon of scripture. It also teaches us that God in these last days have spoken through his son. You see, there is no new extra revelation that is waiting to be dis discovered. No. The Lord told me this today. The Lord told me that today. As soon as I hear that, I think fruitcake. Sorry. Sorry. You, you couldn't have read the word. How can, you be, how can you be listening to a revelation when the revelation is there? God has said he's, 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 there's not going to be no revelation, no new revelation. And these people who are saying it, the reason why I say I, I call them fruitcakes is because these are the people who claim to know the word of God. The word became flesh and dwelt among us. Whatever God wanted to say, he says it in Jesus. Okay? I and the Father are one. He's the expressed image of God. 
The testimony Jesus brought was to reveal the will of the Father. He always mentioned the Father. I and the Father are one. I come down here to do the will of the Father. And what did the voice say? This is my beloved son. Listen to him. Ah, but I want to hear God speak. Okay. Open your Bible to hear God speak. I want to hear God speak loud. I want to hear God speak audibly. Then read the word of God out loud. (laughs) (laughs) Then you can hear God speak. You see, Peter says this, knowing this first, that no prophecy of scripture is of any private interpretation. For prophecy never came by the will of man, but holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. But there were also false prophets among the people, even as there will be false teachers among you who will secretly bring in destructive heresy, even denying the Lord who bought them, and bring on themselves swift destruction. And many will follow their destructive ways, because of whom the way of truth is blasphemed. By covetousness, they will exploit you with deceptive words. For a long time, their judgment has been idle, and their destruction does not slumber. Well, their destruction, their judgment has not been idle, rather. And their destruction does not slumber. You see, Peter is talking, you're the false teachers. Talking of judgment coming on false teachers. And it would have been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness. It would have been better for them not to have known the way of truth, rather than having known the way of truth and righteousness and turning away from it. He likens it to a dog returning to his vomit. Now, can you picture that in your mind? A dog returning to his vomit? Or a soul wallowing in the mud after she's been cleaned, the bird? Corrupt men have gone out from among you and enticed the inhabitants of the city, saying, let us go and serve other gods that, that we have not known. Deuteronomy 13, 13. Let us go after other gods. Peter, under the divine inspiration of the Holy Spirit, is explicit in revealing the outcome of ungodly men and women. And he could easily be describing the situation in the church today. God has given these people over to a reprobate mind. And that is a very, very serious and dangerous situation to be in. They have lost their conscience. They have lost their conviction. They've been seared with an hot iron. What a dangerous situation to be in. Especially when you are hanging over the precipice of eternity. What a dangerous position to be in. They need to apply the eye salve. Just as the Laodicean church. To see their spiritual state and miserable condition they're in. They need to apply the eye salve. You see, the church has got no vision anymore. Some have become so spiritually blind. Denying the Lord. I have not sent these prophets, yet they run. I have not spoken to them, yet they prophesied. If they had stood in my counsel and had caused my people to hear my words, then they would have turned them from their evil way. And from the evil of their doings. You find that in Jeremiah. Judgment against the prophets in Jeremiah's day. It's always been the same. The modern assembly is trying every gimmick to get man and woman into their meetings. They offer this and they offer that. They've got lights in the church. They've got dancing ladies. Anything goes. But I can tell you one thing. There is an absence of God. Now God is everywhere. Okay. God is, in ev- God is everywhere. Because David said in Psalm 139. If I make my bed in hell. You're so God is omnipresent. God is everywhere. But what I mean to say is. God doesn't work in such places. They are telling people God is working. And they view it from God. And they buy the revelation from God. But God doesn't work in them in these places. Do you know I think one of the worst judgments that God can put on someone 
is to give them about them what they want. I think that's one of the worst judgments that God will give them over. Letting them do what they want. Letting them indulge in their sinful passions, in their sinful lusts. Yeah. I think that's one of the worst judgments. When God says, you want to do that? Go ahead. You go ahead and do it. Jude reminds us that certain men have crept in. They didn't come in announced. They crept in. Who long ago were marked out for condemnation. And godly men who turn the grace of God into lewdness. And deny the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. You know, them words they crept in and noticed. Indicates that there was no alarm. They just blended in. They just blended in. They looked the same. They looked like Christians. They spoke the same lingo. They crept in. Unnoticed. Nobody questioned what they were speaking. Nobody questioned their teaching. We read earlier from Ezekiel. We need the people weeping. Why were they weeping? Well, they were weeping over the abomination in the temple. Now, if you go back a chapter to Ezekiel chapter 8, we discover there was detestable practices going on in the temple. The Lord said, Son of man, have you seen what they are doing in my temple? If you turn again, you will see even greater abominations. In other words, if you think that's bad, what are you looking at? Come and see. There's weak, there's, it gets worse. So he brought me to the door of the court, and when I looked, there was a hole in the wall. He said to me, dig into the wall. And when I dug into the wall, there was a door. And he said to me, go in and see the wicked abominations which they are doing. So I went in and saw every sort of creeping, abominable thing. And all the idols of the house of Israel portrayed all around on the walls. Do you know the word abomination in the Bible is the strongest word and expression of hatred for wickedness? You won't find a stronger word than abomination. It's the strongest word. Have you seen what the elders of the house are doing? Have you seen what they do? Every man in his room, elders, what are they saying? The Lord doesn't see us. The Lord has forsaken us. Well, the Bible tells me the eyes of the Lord run to and forth of the earth. And he that watches over Israel neither slumbers nor sleeps. He knows everyone's heart. He knows what we and you were thinking right now. He knows what you're going to be thinking in an hour's time. He knows everything. That's how great God is. This is the great God we serve. This is the awesome God we serve. He knows everything. He knows the beginning from the end. He knows everything. He knows the condition of our hearts. The elders of Israel are committing abominations in the dark. You see, that's why men love darkness. They don't want to come into the light because the light exposes them. Have you seen what they're doing? This is the modern church, you know. Committing abominations in the name of Christianity. In the name of the Lord. Lying signs and wonders, lying prophecies, transforming themselves in angels of light. Evil men getting worse and worse. Why, why am I so passionate about it? Because man's soul is on the line, that's why. Yeah. Because man's soul. Mm. Even as we are speaking, men and women are slipping into a crisis of eternity, putting their faith in these people, in what they are teaching. This is the modern church. This is the modern church. Worshipping a golden calf. Yeah. The Lord's not watching. It's alright. It's okay what we do in secret. I mean, after all, we're under the day of grace. God will understand, will he? Every man in the room of his, of his idol. What's an idol? I'll tell you what an idol is. 
An idol is something that replaces God. An idol is something that is more important than God. Where your treasure is, your heart will be also idolatry. Idol that replaces God. Moves God out to the, the central position of your heart and the idol is put there. And when we get to Ezekiel 9, the glory had lifted from the temple. Ichabod, the glory is departed from the temple. Mm. And the Lord called the man. He was clothed with linen. And he had a writer's ink on at his side. And he said, you come here. He said, I want you to go through the city. Go through Jerusalem and put a mark. On those men who sigh and cry over all the abominations that are done within it. Put a mark on them. Those who are sorrowful. Those who are weeping. Put a mark on them. And to the others who are disobedient, he said, kill them. Do not let your eyes spare nor have any pity. At least slay old. Yes, old. And young men, maidens and little children, and women, but do not come near anyone on whom is the mark, and begin at my sanctuary, at my house. They piled the bodies up in the temple court. He said, defile the temple, they piled the bodies there, as a witness of the wrath of God, the judgment of God. All those without the mark would be condemned to death. Do you remember in Egypt when the angel of death came that night over the Passover? He said, when I see the blood on the lintels of the door, I'll pass over you. There was a mark on the door. There was a mark. The blood was smeared down the lintels of the door. So when the avenging angel came and passed he would pass them by because he saw the blood. There's a tremendous truth in that. Tremendous truth. And there's going to be another abomination shortly in the temple of Jerusalem. Because there'll be a man who will entice all them religious people to receive his mark. On the right hand of forehead. They won't choose Christ, but they'll choose him. This is an evil mark. Without it, no one can buy or sell or do anything. And if those who are around will resist the mark, they will be put to death. But if they do receive the mark, they will go to hell forever. Where they will be tormented day and night. And he himself shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God. Now, Jesus said, when I come, you don't accept me, but when another comes, you will accept. They will drink the full strength of God's wrath in the cup of his indignation. And the smoke of their torment will ascend forever and ever. They will have no rest, no peace, no comfort day or night. Who worship the beast or his image, or whoever receives the mark of his name. People have said to me, you don't actually believe that, do you? Yes, I do. You don't actually believe that that's literal? I said, yes, I do. Some preachers, teachers, who say, oh, they tell us to society. They don't even believe in hell. They don't even believe in, 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 in eternal torment. You can speak to people about hell on the street. They don't believe in hell. But in so many words, they'll tell you what to get there. Yes, in so many words, they'll tell you what to get there. But they don't believe in hell. According to Revelation 22 verse 4, the forehead is reserved for the name of God. They shall see his face and his name shall be on their foreheads. The believer's hope today is to see the Lord face to face. Something Moses didn't see. Or any other human. 
had the privilege to do so. No man has seen God at any time. Jesus has declared him. Yet people like Jesse Duplantis and other people who have been to a heaven on a cable car. <laughs> oh yes. Yes, my friends. Been to heaven on a cable car. Yes, follow, he was following an angel who had blonde hair. Yes, that's worse. <laughs> and people are believing him. People will believe the lies that these people are saying. No man has seen God at any time. No. And I suggest if they are having visions of God like that, two things. Stop telling people the lies in front of the church. And number two, don't eat cheese at night. Because <laughs> it might affect you. <laughs> these people are believing these people. Really? You went to heaven? Yeah. The third? Oh, my goodness. Oh, so and so was only on the uh, so on the internet the day. There was, there was a man on there, he went to heaven. Uh, he, he had sepsis, he died, and he was there for 30 minutes talking to Jesus. There's a new person on the internet, I guarantee you, every week that I've been to heaven. And they've got a book out. For $30 you can buy it. But I can guarantee you, you go on, on to there. See, Moses said to the Lord, Lord, can I see your glory? He said, no. He said, you can see my, the, the back parts of me. He said, you can't see my glory. Yet these people are claiming that the glory is in their meetings. And I had to laugh. The Lord said, you can't see my face, for no man shall see me and live. You see, my brothers and my sisters, you will only be able to stand in his presence when you are clothed with immortality. We will see him. When this body puts off corruption and is renewed. You see, outwardly we are perishing, but inwardly we are being renewed. This is divine sanctification. Well, the work of divine sanctification. And Revelation 3.12 says, He who overcomes, I will make. The mark of the forehead, the names on their forehead is both in contrast to the mark of the beast and in fulfillment of the promise to the faithful believers in Philadelphia. Because in Revelation 3.12 he says, He who overcomes, I will make him a pillar in the temple of my God and he shall go out no more. I will write on him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God the new Jerusalem which comes down out of heaven from my God and I will write on him my new name write on him my new name what a, what a, what a blessing that our, our foreheads are reserved for the name of God but this mark of the beast which everybody's talking about is a brand of the devil and people will take it. First and foremost, because they can't buy or sell. Before the judgments are unleashed, God prepares to seal 144,000 of his servants on their foreheads. Seals are signs of ownership, of authority. In ancient times, if a letter was sent, a document, the document was sealed by a signet ring or, or like a cylinder pressed into a, a lump of clay and it would seal the letter where the letter was open it would seal down the letter a seal Revelation 7 he says do not harm the earth, the sea or the trees till we have sealed the servants of our God on their foreheads so they're going to be sealed before the judgments come if, you, if you're a true spiritual believer in Jesus Christ, you have not only received the spirit of adoption, but according to Ephesians 1.13, you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit. Yeah. That's a true Christian. Right. Talking about knowing people by their fruits, that's a true Christian. In him you also trusted after you heard the word of truth, by the way. The word of truth, always underline the word truth. The gospel of your salvation, in whom also having believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Who is the guarantee of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession to the praise of his glory. 
this guarantee will never run out. Mm. It'll never expire. You know, you, a, you buy something and the guarantee is, uh, ex- is, is only guaranteed for a year, but this guarantee never runs out. The seal means ownership. Do you know the Lord knows who are his? Can't fool the Lord. He knows who are his. The true Christian has a distinctive mark, as we mentioned earlier, the blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, cleanses us from sin. When I see the blood, I will pass over you. The true Christian have been redeemed and purchased by his precious blood. They have been to the cross. And so many people today are following these false teachers. And I'm... I've got, a, I've got a compassion for them because these people are so gullible. Listening to their lies. Paul told those of Corinth, but even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. Whose mind of the God of this age is blinded, who do not believe, lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. <clears throat> you see, the true Christian carries around in his body the dying of the Lord Jesus, So that the life of Jesus may be displayed. That's our testimony. We carry around in our bodies his death. So that his life is revealed in us. So people are drawn to us. And they say something different about you. You're not religious like other people. No. I have the Holy Spirit. I have the Holy Spirit of God. Inside. He's doing something. He's changing me. He's molding me. He's making me into his image. That's sanctification. That's the work of the Holy Spirit to make us more like Christ. That is what makes a true believer stand out. Not by words, but by action. Not by words. No, 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 no. Action speaks louder than words. There has to be evidence that that work of transformation is at work in our lives. See, there are many who are marked out for condemnation. Jude says that. We read it. Those who are leading others away from the simplicity of the gospel. Those who pervert the gospel with lies, who do not handle the word of God correctly, will one day answer to God. Because they're making their words to suit themselves and their hearers. Oh, we can't. We can't preach the, the real gospel. We'll offend people. So what? But they'll walk out of my church. So what? What if they walk out? At least you've told them the truth. God hasn't called me to be a watchman. Although we're all watchmen. But he hasn't called me like Ezekiel. But when that's said, I am not going to sit back and watch people gamble their lives away and go to hell. By these false heretics out there who are preaching and teaching and leading thousands astray every day. They have no conscience, but I've got a conscience. I'm not a prophet, but I'm simply drawing people. I want to draw people's attention to the real word of God before it's too late. We are told to speak out against those who preach any other doctrine. We are told to do it. Ah, uh, you mustn't be judgmental. Ah, uh, you know, Stewie, judge not, you know. Yes, they've said that to me. But they, but what about what they preach? Ah, uh, yeah, I know, but, you know, we mustn't judge them. Really? God, as I said earlier, God will judge those outside the church. He'll also judge those inside the church. But we must address them. Romans 16, 17 says this. Now I urge you, brethren, not those who cause division and offences, contrary to the doctrine which you heard, and listen to this, and avoid them. You see, division causes stumbling blocks to others. 
And Paul told the Corinthian believers that there should be no schism in the body. There should only be unity. You should all be agreeing. See, the early church, they were all, they were all in one, of one accord. When the church was born, they were all of one accord. They were all of one mind. That is the church. To be all, of, to be all going in the same direction. Ephesians 5.11 And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them. For it is shameful even to speak of those things which are done by them in secret. The elders are there burning their incense, worshipping their idols in secret. God won't see us. He'll turn a blind eye. And God says, look again and see the abomination they are doing. Look again. If you think that's bad, wait for the second installment. You see, the church at Galatia was in danger. And Paul was shocked at the Galatians' defection from the gospel of God's undeserving grace. The Galatians had unwittingly fallen for a different message. One which was not a true message. One that had nothing to do with salvation at all. And there was those who was causing, and those who was guilty of perverting the gospel. He says, I marvel, I'm astonished that you are turning away so soon from him who called you. In his grace of Christ to a different gospel. That's what we're hearing today. A different gospel. It is a different gospel. It is a different message. <coughs> so to all the false hypocrites out there, and the teachers and hypocritical, hypocritical liars, those who are leading others astray, you need to sit up and take note of the next verse. Because this applies to you. Even if we are an angel from heaven, mm. preach any other gospel to you than what we have preached, let him be accursed. As we have said before, so now I say again, if anyone preaches any other gospel to you than what you have received, let him be anathema. Accursed. Anathema. Let him be eternally damned. Anathema. We need to be aware of those who preach a different gospel. You see, Paul the Apostle sought the approval of God and not of man. No, 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 no. He did not have, he did not base his decision on the opinion of other people. No. He was singly mindedly had his mind aimed on pleasing God. He had a dramatic conversion. And God had told him, uh, Jesus, I, I, I spoke to him on the road and said, you know, I have appeared to you for this purpose to make you a minister and a, and a witness both of the things which you have seen and of the things which I will reveal to you. So there's a true uh, man of God. He never got any direction from a human source, but from God. Yeah. In 2 Corinthians 11, 4, Paul says, If he who comes preaches another Jesus whom we have not preached, or if you have received a different spirit which you have not received, or a different gospel which you have not accepted, you may well put up with it. That's the church today. Putting up with it. They do put up with it. Another Jesus, another gospel, another spirit. Do you know what another Jesus would be? Someone who was just a man and not God. Mm. No resurrection, no crucifixion, just a man. That's another Jesus. Mm. Yet these men have claimed to be Jesus. David Koresh followed him. William Branham claimed to be, uh, I think it was the prophet Ezekiel. People believed him. William Branham. Those who preach a watered-down gospel are guilty of perverting the truth, which is not truth at all. <coughs> and I'm very concerned about people who are in assemblies <coughs> and meetings or even church buildings today who are listening to heretics who are putting them on the road to hell. 
sensual people who cause division not having the spirit when Jude declares that false teachers are without the spirit he leaves no doubt as to their eternal destiny they are merely worldly people who do not belong to God they don't even know God they don't even know God according to Romans 8 if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ he is not his you try and convince me that, I'm, that a heretic has got the Holy Spirit who guides him towards truth operating in their lives I don't think so I don't think so the Holy Spirit will only guide into truth and if there is error he will convict So to all those out there on, 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 on the media who listens to the message, I'm going to ask you a very important question. Which Jesus are you following? The only assembly people should be in is one that is biblically and doctrinally sound in their teaching. A church that preaches Christ crucified. Repentance yeah. from sin and the cross a church that preaches that Jesus Christ is the only way to heaven not one way not one way if you were in a place where they teach Jesus is one way you better get out Jesus Christ is the only way to heaven. And if you forget everything I've said today on this message, please remember that Jesus Christ is the only way to heaven. Amen. There is salvation in no one else. Right. There is no other name under heaven given to men whereby we must be saved. Amen. If you miss Jesus, you miss heaven. There is no other name under heaven given to men whereby we must be saved. No religion, no denomination, no church membership, no sprinkling of water, no confirmations, ceremony, no idols, no other false gods will be able to save you. I don't care how long you attend the church. I don't care if you speak in tongues. I don't care if you've tithed. There is only one name that will save you. Yeah. And that is the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I've got to emphasize that. Because people are saying, he's one way. No. He's the only way. I am the way the truth and the life and no man comes to the Father but by me if you stand before God on the day of judgment and he says depart from me it's because you embraced another God or another idol or you put your faith in someone else to take you to heaven Jesus Christ is the only way to heaven and you need to examine your spiritual life if you are if, if you are concerned about your, your soul then those out there need to examine their lives this is not this is not a game we're not we're not playing church this is eternity we're talking about here yeah. eternity yeah. it is appointed for man to die once and then judgment and I don't care what any preacher or teacher out there says we'll have a chance after death to repent no you won't mm. listen listen please God allowed a lion spirit to prophesy lies to Ahab in the book of Kings you remember Ahab he would not listen to the true prophets so God in his sovereign will because God can do anything God used a lying and deceitful spirit to prophesy falsely to him 
The prophet prophesied under the influence of evil. And Ahab believed it. Just like today. Ahab listened and heard what he wanted to hear. Check out for yourself. 1 Kings. Read 1 Kings chapter 22. Read the chapter before it. Check it out. Acquire a Berean spirit. Check me out. I could be telling you lies today. The Bereans were more noble. They checked everything out. Check me out. And if my teaching don't add up to the Bible, check me out. <laughs> A spirit came forward and said, I will persuade him. A lying spirit. Yet people today are so gullible. Yet God used a lying spirit. Sounds familiar? Should. Now the spirit expressly says that in latter times, some will depart from the faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits. And doctrines of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their own conscience seared with an hot iron. 1 Timothy 4, 1 and 2. The defection of God's truth is under attack, friends. People are departing from the faith. And they're taking others with them. We must not believe every spirit, but we must test the spirits. We must test the spirits by the word of God. We must test the spirits. Nobody's testing the spirits no more. They are accepting every wind of doctrine, every spirit. We must test the spirits. The Antichrist which now, as John said, is already in the world. We must test the spirits. My concern today is for those people who have been fooled by so-called teachers and prophets. Because many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, we prophesied in your name. We, 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 we drew out demons in your name. You know me, my name is in the book of life. And you say, who are you? I didn't know you. But I thought I was safe. I said a prayer 20 years ago and I, I, thought, I, I thought I knew Jesus. Lord, Lord, don't close the door on me. Lord, it's me, you know me. I don't know you. Depart from me, you worker of iniquity. Can you imagine the terror? Do you hear them words? There's no second chance. And hell is forever. Eternity is forever. But in the world today, people don't want to entertain the thought of eternity. It's easy to let them thoughts of eternity slip by when you're, when you're sitting on the beach, sipping a cold drink. You've got that great view of the sea. And it's, you know, eternal issues don't come into your mind. But it's a reality. Man is going to die. If God doesn't come back and take the believer, we're all going to die. I thought I was saved, Lord. You know, I really thought I was saved. I mean, I've done all them things in your name. All them things in your name! I came to church three times a week. I tithed. i done all that. Listen, make your calling and election sure. Make sure you are following the right Jesus today. Be diligent to present yourself approved of God, a worker who does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Paul says, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Those who don't read this book, can't work out their own salvation. You need to read the word of God. As our sister said today, this is our food, this is our meat. This is our guide. This is our lamp. Approved of God. What is approved of? What is what is what does that word mean? Approved. Approved is what remains after testing, like metal is tested and refined. See, truth defines the nature of Scripture. It is a beacon of truth. In the darkness of all kinds of falsehoods. Teachers who preach and teach the word should make every effort to handle the word with truth accurately. 
because teachers will be judged. James 3, 1 says, My brethren, let not many of you become teachers, knowing that we shall receive a strict judgment. Acquire a Berean spirit. Test the scriptures. Read the scriptures. So let me ask you in closing. Choose you this day you, you will serve. Man or God? The real Christ or false one? One thing is for sure, the only people that will see Christ is the ones who have been marked, who have been marked out as true believers. And I want to just say one last thing to anybody who adds to the word of God. There's a warning that those who add to the word of God and those who take away, there's going to be consequences. If you add to the word of God, God will add you the plagues. If you take away from the word of God, God will take away his, your part from the book of life. Terrifying consequences. Jesus is coming. The real Jesus is coming. Are you prepared to meet your God? Paul says, we have renounced the hidden things of shame. Not walking in craftiness, not handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. Mm. Not handling the word of God deceitfully. No, 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 no. May the truth of God's word set you free. Because you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. So my friends, may the Holy Spirit today and every day guide you into all truth. Amen. And God bless you all.